Hello and welcome back to That Chick Angel TV. It's me, Angel, and this is another Hashtag Ask Angel segment. So I'm going to jump right in. I have four questions. And the first question that's not even listed on here that I know you're going to ask is, yes, this is a wig. I did not feel like doing my hair and I've got to go shoot moms on the loose. So I said, we're just going to plop this oldie but goodie on here. Yes. Mm. I look like somebody's auntie. I look like I got a whole bunch of aunts and I show up to birthday parties, the sweet 16s, like, that's my jam. Ah. That's what I feel like in this wig. But oh well. <laughs> All right. First question is from B Nizzlest. She says, why don't you want to have any more kids? Um, you know, the reason why I am very apprehensive about birthing another child into this world is because I was so depressed during my first pregnancy. Now, granted, I understand the circumstances around my pregnancy were also depressing. I was kn knowing that I wasn't going to be able to work. Um, and I felt like it just slowed down the momentum of my career drastically. So I just... I don't want to go back to that place. I don't like the fact that I was not happy during my pregnancy and I don't want to put another, I don't want to put myself through it and I don't want to put another child through that. I feel like a mom should be happy around the baby that's in her and that's just not where I was at. So there's your answer. And also I don't want another boy, to be honest. Like if I did not get a girl, I would just be devastated. Even though I do have a boy name. Because when, you know, prior to my first pregnancy, I thought I was going to have four kids. And my second boy would be Jonathan Anthony. Jonathan after my husband's grandfather on his mother's side, who he never got to meet because he passed away before he was born. But he looks just like. All right. Next question is, it's Aggies? I-T-S-A-G-Y-S. -S. Um, she asks, what's my advice for a broken heart? Oh, girl. That's a hard one. You know, it's uh, like... I've had my heart broken and I can't even imagine because I'm so invested in my marriage, like where I would go if my heart was broken now. Like, you know, prior to when my heart was broken before I would, you know, cry, I would do like what most girls would do, <laughs> would just ball my little eyeballs out until it didn't hurt anymore. And now I just feel like I would be the most vindictive bitch my husband would ever meet if he broke my heart like I would cry but I would get even not that I would cheat but I would just try my best to destroy his life so that's not my advice to you but my advice to you is um to stay busy like sometimes we can get so involved in the breakup that we realize there are other aspects of our life that exist so you know if you're young and you're in school just get really active in things that are going on in school you got to really kind of get your mind out of that whole zone of my heart is broken. This guy or girl was my life. Like, what am I supposed to do? And realize that there are so many other things that your life was full of prior to this person breaking your heart and while this person was with you. So focus on those and you'll notice that time heals. I, when they say time heals all things, it heals all things. Like, I remember... Not just heartbreaks. I remember when my grandmother passed away. Like, I was devastated because that woman meant so much to me. And now I can think about her. And sometimes I might get sad. But it's not that same type of pain from when she first passed away. So just know that time will heal all. And just to keep yourself busy with other things that don't remind you of your time with the person that you were with. I hope this helps. And I hope that you're not going through a heartache right now. If so, get you a freakum dress and make him remember that you were the baddest chick he was ever going to get. All right. Next question is for Cynthia or Cynthia Ra. This was sweet. She said, how are you so amazing? Well, thank you. I'm just as amazing as anybody else who's watching this daggone channel. Um, you know what? I don't think I'm amazing. And at the same time, I do. What I mean by that is, is that I don't think I'm any more special than anyone else, but I do believe I am special. I do believe that I am uniquely me and the unique me has unique things to offer. And I don't think I've tapped into everything I have to offer to the world, but I know that there's stuff in me and I can't wait to get it out. I can't wait to develop it. I can't wait to be able to tell my story once I'm at that place where I can look back and say, that's right. That I remember that journey. That is right. This is the things that I said I had in me. You see all those pieces. So I don't think I'm more amazing than anybody that's watching me right now. I think we all have those special, unique things that God puts in us. And I feel like there's nothing greater than tapping into that and realizing, oh, 
This is what you did to make me special. Well, hot dang. Yes. Yeah. Because sometimes I do think, oh, everybody can do what I do. They can't. They can do what they do, and I can't do what they do, but I am the only one that can do Angel the way Angel does Angel. And you're the only one that can do Cynthia Raw the way Cynthia Raw does Cynthia Raw. All right, final question. Oh, I lied. I've got two more questions. Okay, uh, Lolly Doll Crafts had just watched The Butler, and she had a question for me as, um, have I ever experienced racism? Honey, yes. Am I black? Yes. Am I in America? Yes. Have I experienced racism? Absolutely. Um, the one instance that I can pinpoint right off the top of my head because it was so, um, I don't know, I feel like it was a pivotal moment in my life. I was in ninth grade at the time I was attending Scott County High School in Georgetown, Kentucky. I was the only black person in my algebra class. And it was, um, most ninth graders weren't in, I think I was in algebra two. So most ninth graders were not in there. So it was an advanced class. Now, um, it was it was an all ninth grade class, but a very small select group of ninth graders were able to take this class. And because I had not been in the Scott County school system all that time, I was kind of new. And my classmates were so shocked that I was smart enough to be in that class. Now, the only thing that made me different than the rest of them was the color of my skin. We were all the same age. You know, we were all in the same grade. But they thought that I would not have the intelligence to be in that class. And that really stuck with me because I really was trying to pick, figure out, like, what, why am I different? Like, what, what, why are you smart enough to be in this class and I'm not? So, um, that, that just, it, you know, that's not like outright racism. Like, you nigger, you, you know, go back to Africa. It wasn't anything like that. I feel like that is rarer than what people would think of people acting that way um, to folk. It's that type of racism when you question my intelligence because of the color of my skin. Now, I know some dumbass black people. I'm not saying that doesn't exist, but I know some dumb white folk. I even know some dumb Asian people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has a, a bunch of dumb folk within their <laughs> ethnicities, within their culture. Um, but that's, it's not their culture that makes them dumb. You know what I'm saying? It's there, it's either by choice or it's by disability, whatever, whatever it may be. So that always, that moment pushed me to be a smarty pants, pretty much. I am a smarty pants. I'm in school right now. I refuse to get nothing but A's. Now, not to say every assignment I get an A, but my final grade needs to be an A. I need to show out. You will never question. Now, I'm not the smartest person in the world. My vocabulary is not as big as it should be because I uh, struggled with reading growing up. Um, but that still doesn't stop me from flaunting the fact that, yes, I'm working on my second master's. Mm, and I will graduate summa cum laude. Mm, get some of this. Okay. So, yeah, that moment of racism really pushed me to just be a, I am a true smart. I'm one of those irritating people in class where you're like, well, you always know the answer, Angel. Shut up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I do. I'm the black girl, and I know the answers. Yeah. Uh, okay, last question. Grace X, have you ever been to London? Do you plan on coming? I have never been to London, and I would love to go to London. There's so many places I would love to go, y'all. Y'all know I haven't traveled anywhere, especially since I didn't have my baby. Um, but one day, I know me and my husband really want to travel the world. We want to be like uh, Sharzad, my my co-host on the mom's view she's traveled to 30 i think different countries i want to get some traveling in me and i really want my son to get to travel the world as well i want him to be a um a student of the world because sitting in america you get a very skewed view of what is happening in the world you get very um heck i know people who don't travel out of their town and so their 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 view of the world is very um I don't want to say demented, but it's not its not a true depiction of what's happening. And they don't realize how many things out there. Not just bad, because I think people, there's a fear of, oh my God, there's so many horrible things happening. But so many good things. Fo I mean, foods alone. Cultures. So I, I would love to go to London, as well as many other places. And I would love for my son to be able to do that as well with us. So he can get a chance to meet people of all different walks of life. Um, I've always been comfortable around people who are different than me. Like, I'm not a person that has to always surround herself with black women, even though I do do that a lot. But you can put me in a room with a bunch of Korean folk, and I'm going to be up in there like, what y'all say? Huh? I don't understand you, but it seems fun. That's going to be me. <laughs> that is going to be me. So I want my son to also have that um, just 
comfortability of just, and I get that from my mother. My mother can be in a room full of foreigners and not know what's happening, but she will be who everybody wants to talk to. And I want my son to be able to feel that comfortable. I want him, because he's going to be a tall black guy, I don't want him to feel awkward. I want him to be able to walk into a room and feel like there's not a stranger in there. Because he's going to know everybody before the night's over. All right. This 10 minutes. Jesus, I'm talking too much. Make sure y'all check me out on Mom's View. We're going to be doing some other things like uh, Mom's on the Loose. We're going to be doing, um, I forgot, it's some sort of picture thing. I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, and y'all know, subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. I'll be doing an update on my vision board since we're hitting towards the, the, the end of the first quarter of the year. So I want to get some uh, give you all some updates on what's happening as my vision board started to do what it needs to do. What things I can now put on the completed list and what things are still moving in the right direction. Alright guys, make sure you leave any other question you have either below uh, with the hashtag AskAngel and leave your question there. Or you can leave it on my Twitter. Um, I am at AngelTheActress on Twitter. You can leave the hashtag Ask Angel, and I'll make sure I answer it the next time I do this segment. All right, guys. Thank you so much for helping my channel grow, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Talk to you soon. Bye.